Um, but I'm going to start in Habakkuk chapter 2, and it says, in verse 1, it says, I will stand my watch. Let's just say that. I will stand my watch. And I think that that's really the call. God is saying, I'm looking for people that are willing to stand their watch. So it goes on to say, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. Isn't that interesting language? I will watch to see, and then he speaks audibly. So how many understand that watching and hearing have to go hand in hand? I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You know, in the, in the, um, in the Old Testament, we see the picture of the watchman. And generally, watchmen in the days of Israel were stationed two primary places. Number one, they were stationed on the walls of the city. Okay, they were stationed on the ramparts of the city walls. And the watchmen were surrounding the city. They were positioned um, periodically around the walls. And they would watch and see who was approaching. Was it a friend? Was it a foe? Okay, they were watching to see what enemy was approaching. They were watching to see what friend was approaching. And they had to have a certain level of discernment to know which was which. Okay? The second place that a watchman was stationed is they were stationed in watchtowers that watched over the harvest fields. How many know that we need watchmen that know how to watch over the harvest fields? Amen? So we've got we've to be on the, on the wall of the church on the wall of our city, on the gates of our nation, and New Jersey is a gate state. Let me say that again. New Jersey is a gateway state. And for that reason, God is saying, I want to raise up a company of watchmen in this state. I know that in the uh, Chuck and Dutch's 50-state tour in 2003, they named New Jersey the Watchman State. And so that's why I believe that God wants to assemble a company of prophetic watchmen. Now, how many of you are not from New Jersey? Because I know that there's a, there's a lot of people. I just believe that New Jersey has a special calling on it. But I also believe that this region, remember, based on the dream that I had about the lion, the vision I had about the lion, that God is raising up watchmen throughout this region who know how to watch and know how to pray. And I was reminded, I'm, I'm not sure what year I was here last, 18 or 19? 19. 19, okay. Um, I, we were here with a, a, a young prophet named Jonathan Stidham. And I know the last morning we were here, the Lord spoke about how God was going to raise up watchmen that were going to thwart terrorist attacks. How many remember that? Um, and then um, I left the meeting and I went to the airport in Newark and every New York City airport, Jonathan went to, a, I think, a different airport even, and every single airport in the New York region was completely shut down because of a terrorist threat. Did y'all realize that? that was like that afternoon? Fulfilled prophetic word, okay? And we just sat there and we prayed. Um, every single flight was canceled out of the entire New York region because of a terrorist threat that never materialized, because I believe watchmen prayed and interceded, and the word intercede actually has a connotation of getting in the way. See, God can actually give us insight that shows us how to get in the way of what the enemy has planned. Amen? And so I believe that God's raising up a company here in New Jersey that really knows how to watch and pray, not just for the state, but for the region, for the nation, because this is a tipping point state. In other words, a tipping point determines which way something tips. It has, a, a, it has an ability to determine which way a nation will go. And so there's certain states, certain regions that God is raising up, that he's raising up prophetic companies, he's raising up watchmen that know how to pray strategic prayers. And you can look around this room and you can say, what could a group this size do? 
Well, I'm telling you, just like we prophesied last night, and then I found that uh, that that Apostle Tricia spoke yesterday. Th- there is a remnant anointing that God is raising up a, even a small company of people that know how to pray. You know, God has never had to save by many. As a matter of fact, sometimes he actually goes through whole stories where he proves I'm going to save by few. That's the whole story of Gideon, okay? I'm not going to save by many. I'm going to save by few. And so I believe that New Jersey is a tipping point state. There's going to be times of strategic warfare, times of strategic prayer, times of strategic gathering that God will speak, I believe, even over the next year that will say, okay, now it's time to shift this. Now it's time to shift that. And I believe that as shaking begins to come to this region, I believe it's going to be important not to just have a year, a word for the year, but a word for the month. Okay, to see what is, what is God doing, what needs to shift this month. Amen. And so I believe that God's going to kind of fine-tune our hearing, fine-tune our ability to see things in the spirit because this is a tipping point region. Now, um, years ago, I think it was way back, like maybe 2010, 2011, um, I heard this phrase, tipping point, in a moment of prayer um, in our services. Let me just say, a lot of times you hear me say, um, God spoke this to me in prayer. God spoke this to me in prayer. Hey, if you're waiting God to just chase you down and give you a word, it's probably not going to happen. Okay, we've got to spend some time in prayer. We've got to spend some time waiting on the Lord. We've got to spend some time listening. And so I had this word, and the Lord said, it's a tipping point season. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause tipping points to take place within nations. I think it was 2011. And, um, and I, was, I was, you know, contemplating the, the concept of tipping point. We all kind of understand that a tipping point is a point where something can go one way or the other, right? And so I, I had a guy that was in our intercession group, and he was this brilliant um, scientist guy that worked for Cisco. And, and so I, I shared this word and, and I would always tease him because whenever I would share something, he would always come back to me to give me some scientific perspective on what it was that I was saying. And I, I would joking, jokingly say to him that he spoke blonde to me because he would take these massive scientific concepts, and I would be like, okay, you're going to have to, like, dumb that down for me so that I really, I know I'm not dumb, okay, but I would say, I, I would say, you're going to have to, like, break that down for me so that I understand it, and so um, uh, I, I tease about him speaking blonde to me, and blondes, please don't be offended, okay? Um, I, I tell blonde jokes um, for two reasons. Number one, I know I'm not stupid, and number two, I know I'm not blonde, okay? So <laughs> let's just be honest, okay? All right, so so he, so he said, he said, I want you to understand this concept of tipping point. He said, because he, he's like, if you have to like tip something that's very, very heavy, like say if you go out and you have to, you want to like tip a car over. I was a little alarmed at his analogy, but he said, if you want to tip a car over, he said, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to get under it and you've got to lift. And so how do, what do we do? We lift through prayer. We lift through times of worship. He said, but it, if you're trying to tip something that's heavy and that's large, which is what we're doing in a nation right now, we're tipping something that's heavy and large. He said, you got to get under it. you got to lift it. But at some point, you have to shift. You can't just keep lifting because that doesn't work. You have to at some point get under it and shift, right? And he said, the way that you shift is, he said, he said you've got to change your positioning. And I think there's been a lifting that's been going on, but now the Lord's saying there's a shifting that must take place, okay? And how do we shift? I think we shift through prophesying. We shift through decreeing. Come on. And then after you shift, then you've got to push. And here's the the problem with the church. We think lifting and shifting is enough. No, 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 we've got to keep pushing. We've got to keep pressure on the issues until, everybody say until, until if we're talking about a car, until that, that car comes to a place where you've pushed hard enough, you've pushed long enough that it hits the tipping point. Now, what happens at the tipping point is one of two things. Number one, if you stop pushing, it's going to come back on top of you. 
And I think the church has given up too soon in some issues. And it's come back on top of us. And we've had to start over. Come on, is that true? Or we can push a little harder, a little longer, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly, the thing that has worked against you, speaking of gravity, the thing that has worked against you suddenly begins to work for you. Come on. And I think that we really are, are coming to that point where things that have pushed against us, things that have worked against us, God's going to flip them. Amen. But the church has got to stay in position. We've got to continue to press in with revelation. Last year's revelation doesn't move us into this next year's victory. Amen. We've got to understand that we've got to constantly press in. We've got the word. We've got the foundation of the word. But God is constantly wanting to bring us fresh revelation to understand God's plans, to understand the enemy's plans, and to understand how to cooperate with heaven to cause a tipping point to come to, come to pass and to see things begin to flip into their proper positioning. Amen.